Hey guys, Malfunction here again. Another week of post deed deliveries. Uh, this is from JJ from NZCNC website. Um, so, if you're watching this for the first time, um, welcome. This is the, a narrative on Rumble. Uh, it was a narrative on YouTube until I got banned for talking about my comic book character in line with the history of Ceausescu's Romania and the stuff that he did there and the person I was talking about was who experienced it and so I was like miffed pissed off at YouTube and I was like a whole week of you know not being able to do it I took that in the video but they were like still one thing because I was going to edit it anyway so this week we have a couple deliveries uh well one delivery with a couple books in it we're also going to talk about New Zealand Collectors this is a um a book by Matt Elliott, um, Kiwi Collectors, Curious and Unusual Kiwi Hobbies. I'll tell you, um, you know, you'll see why I've actually, I bought that last, it cost me five bucks. We're going to talk about teddy bears today. And we're going to talk about screen printing as well, going back to the basics and stuff like that. So there's quite a few things I've got online. As well as the auction that I'm that I was running on on our um, on NZCNC site to help boost our um, our crowdfund campaign for our company New Zealand. I'm um, sorry, Plunge Enterprises New Zealand. So let's begin. Let's begin with um, let's, the New Zealand the Kiwi Collectors book. Now, so this book is pretty cool. So the blurb is. An interesting collection is as much about the collector as it is the assembled possessions. Joint best-selling author, author Matt Elliott. I haven't actually heard of him, but I'm, I have one of his books now, so I guess he's a bestseller. This is from Harper Collins, New Zealand, by the way. Um, so as he tracks down a variety of collectors from around the country, their beloved items range from firearms to carnivorous, can, can, carnivorous plants, termica pot, pottery to railway signals. Doors are unlocked, lights switched on, and dust is blown off as Matt is welcomed into an array of basements, sheds, and garages, and entertained by owners who are serious collectors but don't take themselves too seriously. Like all of us, you know. Now, so it's got it's got really cool things in here. Like seriously, there's so like locomotive museum. Um, you've got um, let me see, what else we got here? Keep on running, and he's. Talk about machinery collectors. You've got Alvis collectors with the Alvis uh, Presser Museum. Um, and let's see. Oh, you glammy thing is probably one of a bit more important ones to what we're talking about. So, this is um, the gentleman. This is the reason I bought the book, right? Because it has something about what we what i'm about right which is comic books and pop culture and stuff so the title of this one is uh oh you glammy thing number 14 location dunedin 70s retro collector ian chapman so uh let me see it's got stuff like from like this right will robertson swiss family robertson robinson robinson Lost in space, 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 space. Thunder, uh, Thunderbirds. Um, but he also has Doctor Who, Kiss, Batman, uh, Archie, uh, Wonder Woman. Just a whole bunch of. But his thing is the seventies, and I thought it was quite interesting. Now I think somewhere in here, if I remember right, maybe I did not remember right, but that was pretty cool. So there's one also here. He got a uh, music. Um, Hector, um, <clears throat> Hector Country Museum, Music Heritage Museum. Uh, this is 22 Ive Street, Hector. Never heard of Hector. So then you've got like uh, pinups, the metal collector, military medals and stuff. Is that cool? And um, talking about medals, uh, my grand, um, my step granddad was awarded a medal after almost. 60 maybe 70 years after the second world war as he fought for the allies um 
so that's kind of our our tie to our side of family tied to well not our side of family our family tied to the second world war um you got a person who collects um the carnivorous plants all right so you got that the cool thing would be like i mean you know with magazine with us we're doing sun um sunspot magazine it's cool to like actually look at the um, various things in pop culture that we talk about like the first issue uh which is online right from rise and uh, it's only 2.99 us so it's 64 pages half of like 40 40 pages of it's just com comic book stories and the rest is articles and the reviews so it looks at our local artists painters um uh, writers uh historians like Adrian Kennard has a um, there's an interview with Adrian Kennard from Earth Sand in there, and it's the reason I was mentioning that is because that's part of history that we're putting out to the world. Not only history, but cu um, current history and the c culture that we're in. So much culture in the sense of po enjoying the pop culture, the the amount of different people doing different things from all over the world that are involved in the whole you know cosplay, comic books, manga. Um, you know just so much stuff and so yeah something like this would be cool for us i mean like i've actually think i've been to this place is this kiri kiri no no i might not have but this is the floating <laughs> check this out he collects um see um what's that ah oh, gosh i forgot the name of it fishing floats fishing floats right um so yeah there's some museums in here so you got Edwin Fox Maritime Museum, you got Southwood Car Museum. I think that's in South Island. I don't think I ever got to see that. I mean, I think that wasn't um, not South Island in Chicago. There's New Zealand Rugby Museum. Um, I mentioned the Hector and the Fell Lock Locomotive and the Katie's um, Presley. So let me see. Oh, here we go. A comic Nigel Green, eighteen. All right, let's go to 18, number 18, where are you? I knew there was something to do with comics in here. Did I forget? 17. Weaponry. That's pretty cool. I knew a person who collected weaponry here in um, Fungare. I know a few people that actually collected things here. So this is the reason. I, I thought it was the other one, but this is the reason. Nigel Green, number 18. There's a young fella. He's probably older now. Right, and what is he holding in his hand? He is holding a Judge Dread comic, much like most Kiwis, right, that I'm aware of, Australia, Australasia, have read Judge Dread 2000, um, 2018 featuring Judge Dread growing up, you know, eight, nine years old, and got into that that way. And um, it's kind of interesting to see who, who's into it. You know and got into it early because you look at what they're doing now a lot of them are very creative artists and stuff and the, the influence is huge right so this is nigel green knows his onions when it comes to uh, <laughs> green onion. when it comes to um comic books he goes as i settle into the comfortable couch in his lounge i tell him i can recall buying several donald duck and uncle scrooge comics went with pocket money on summer summer holidays years ago and i was the same in fiji um I was reading Donald Duck comics and had no idea what they were. That's a weird thing, right? Because when you're a kid, you, your brain kind of like, um, you know, isn't doesn't take in information the way adults would take in. And this is the thing about like being a child, seeing the world, and you have a very childish opinion about the, what the world should be like and stuff. And then you grow up and you go, huh, yeah, this is very different to what I thought when I was a kid. Anyway, back to this. So location, Beach Haven, Auckland. And so he talks about various amounts of stuff. So you got like stuff like this that he's collected, right? Um, Star Wars. Um, also, let's see. There's Destroy Eclipse. Eclipse Comics from, um, was it Eclipse? No, Eclipse Comics was on its, I almost thought that was like part of, um, Marvel Comics. Anyway, right, so this is just, you know, I just thought that was pretty cool. And then this is, he talks about V for Vendetta and stuff. So this is a pretty cool book, and it's part of my collection now, you know. 
It's not an X library book, which is really cool because even I even collect X library books because if they're good books, why not? All right. So before I move on, I want to talk about this little thing. This is a frozen little, um, um, little. I think McDonald's toy. Yep, it's McDonald's toy from 2012. And I was about to put it in a free um, container, which is like this one here. Whoa, that one there, that big with the um, Pikachu in it. Um, but that's not going to go in there. Pikachu is staying home with me. It's only there because I've got to put it, put it somewhere for room. Um, okay, so we're going to, for, for the plunge convention, right, this year, we're going to have a this basket at the, at the front, and we're going to tell the, when the kids come in or, you know, people come in, to go into the um, convention, just go pick one. You have two seconds. We're going to count five seconds. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Pick one, whatever is in your hand, you get to keep. Now you can go in. And it's kind of a, a you know, it's something that's cost me, really, to be honest, because um, I bought it, you know, I spent the last couple of years buying all this stuff. And, and some of it I can't keep because I don't have room. And we thought about selling it. We tried that last year and I was like, yeah, it's not really. You know, why don't we just give away toys? You know, isn't it? Like, remember, I mean, I just think of myself as a big kid, right? And think about what it would be like if I was a child and somebody was just giving away free toys. Wouldn't that be cool? It's like when you have lolly scrambles. I remember lolly scrambles at Christmas time. Macintosh lollies. I can still taste it. My favorite were the coconut ones. And I th yeah, it was the coconut ones. Maybe because, I, you know, I'm from the islands and it just reminded me of home or something as a, you know, a seven or eight year old kid. But just the fact of getting free things as a child. And I even like doing free things as an adult, so who does it, right? But it's such a such a such a cool thing when you get given um, things, you know, toys and stuff as a kid. Especially, you know, if if you come from a family can't afford it, or that you got, well, you know, the budget is a bit tight, and you go, Mom, 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 and you go, Dad, 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 and they go, No, and you don't know why, but parents don't want to have time to explain it. And I've been like that. I like I've had times in my life where I've like I want this, and it's like expensive as, and it's like no, you can't have that. But I did have a very very cool uh, family friends who are older than me, but like a couple, couple of years older than me, and then like uh, we call them auntie and uncle, right? And um, they lived in the next time town over in Kaukau, and they weren't they weren't they were a bit more. Um, you know, they were, in, they were Indians from Sri Lanka and they had a bit more money because of their work and because he was a doctor and stuff and the kids were, you know, knew what was hip at that time. And I got some of the best stuff. I'm telling you, man, I got some of the best stuff from them. And it's just the craziest thing. And this, is, this isn't this is it, but this is basically a Tomitron, right? A uh, Tomitronic, right? So you put the batteries on underneath. It's, I think it takes about three triple A's all right or double A's whatever and it's like a little video game seriously it's a video game it is a good video <laughs> this one's a shark attack and I and I bought it for quite a lot and I bought it because I wanted a part of my part of my past to be with me and then I got offered the actual Tommy Tron Tron like from the movie which I had right it's a it's a it's a beige color and it's a tank, and you like thing it, and you go left and right, and you, and you go boom, you know, it flies up, and it's like a space, space again, mm -hmm. and it was really cool. And I, um, but at that time, I didn't have the money and so on. But I think if I save up, I might be able to get it now. But it's like it's got sound and everything, and, it, and it's like it's you look through it, you know, it's like a, it's three D in here, and this is way back in like let me see, the Tron came out of eighty two or something like that. Anyway, so you know. They, I got, you know, I got the the version of this, the Tron version of this from the family, right? And it felt so good knowing that, and you look, and I look forward to it. And I, I think my my sister looked forward to it, my bro, and my little brother, who, you know, my youngest little brother, you know, yeah, my youngest brother also probably looked forward to it. And, you know, we were treated so well. And it was like, okay, mom and dad weren't able to give us all these cool in crowd i mean in things at that time right each year that something great came out we got birthday present easter presents and we got christmas presents so three times of the year we had really amazing presents 
and so we shut our mouth. I think I, sh I think I shut my mouth, but I was a terror. I was a silly kid when I was a kid. So I took, I took it to school, and it got stolen out of my bag. You know, and so I've been looking for one of those for ages. I, I, got, I was silly when I was a kid. I just didn't think about how other kids would want something I had that was given to me that I love. And this is the nature of the world, right? Not everybody is good. And not everybody ac accepts you having what you have without taking it from you. Anyway, so, so I, so back to the kids thing. So with this, Jason and I, we decided like, you know, my assistant manager, hey, why don't we just give the kids the toys that I don't want? Not that I don't want them because they're bad or terrible or just, just that I don't have the room and it'll be cool for the kids to go in. Either male or female kid, boy or girl, just pick one up and go in, you know, that's your first entrance into, you know, a happy entrance into the convention. So you already have a smile. You're already playing with something and you're not going to be bored straight away or something. And, you know, you got something going. So I almost put this through, but I decided, well, you know what? My brain went, you know, I could basically change that, put an incredible toy in there. I mean, a picture in there, right? That's Shane's drawn or someone else's drawn. And now it's an incredible snow globe that spins. And like I mentioned the other day, right, last week about the dinosaur thing uh, with Jurassic League coming out. And I could picture, cut out a picture of that, uh, you know, Batman as the dinosaur and put it on that little thing. And now it's now it's a Batman. It's a Justice League Jurassic Park thing. And this is the thing with my, where my brain works. It's like always creativity and stuff. So, and from going into that, let's talk I've I've been collecting these, right? This is just a bear bear. <laughs> I guess that's what you want to call it. So, one of the things we I've I've created is called um, PJ and Shibi, right? The modern bears. It's a it's a, a three panel comic strip, and it's just about it's a slice of life with animals in place of humans, and we don't have cats and dogs. No no domesticated animals, just the wildlife, right? And so we have bears in it. PJ is a bear. Shibi is a bear. Uh, the mother's a bear. And so I've been collecting, trying to get collect all as many as I could, and make up and get somebody to actually dress them up or create the clothes that that PJ and Shibi wear. And this is just like my brain working again, trying to be thinking outside of the um, you know the square and thinking, what do I do with this? And might seem like silly having all these things around the house, you know, like having, you know, apartment, having this around, having that around and people going, what are you doing with teddy bears? And then you go, well, you know what? I actually have created these things and as a comic strip and this is what I can do. And I can put a picture of Incredigirl in here or, or on the back of it, right? Nano. So you got two people. So you got Nano on one side and Incredigirl on the other side. And of course, there's so many other characters coming up. Um, so many other characters we're creating. So the next thing I want to talk about is bleach print, right? So when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, right, living up in Auckland, I used to design T-shirts and stuff and draw on T-shirts. And I remember just about last month, I was like, "Hey, I used to do this with bleach. I could like do a cut out a pattern, or not even cut out a pattern, just brush it on, and then paint designs on top of that bleach." And, you know, you have this thing, and it looks really cool. And the idea actually came from a, someone had actually done it, which was a singlet. Well, it wasn't a singlet. It was like a T-shirt with the thing, of like no sleeves, I guess it was a singlet. But it was actually, it was a T-shirt. It wasn't like a thin singlet, right? So it had an American flag, and it was like painted where it was like wearing off. But behind it was, it was, it was printed, uh, like screen printed onto the a bleached, part of it and I was like huh I should try that and so I did and you know and here's like about 20 odd years later because that was when I was 18 19 and it's 20 years later because I'm about 49 in about a couple of months um, okay so next up I want to talk and that's for this is actually well this design is actually for Jason's hoodie we bought him right and so that we can his you know, we were going to put it on here. You know, we bought a second-hand hoodie. 
it looked pretty cool a couple bucks and thought okay i could bleach it onto there but then he said he said you know do you, i said to him do you want this on there he said no why don't you you know what if we cover it and so that's how i thought okay you know what we'll we'll sew, sew this on and it'll it'll you know basically cover the entire thing like that and then i could probably paint around it and um in a white pattern and then put it all just leave the that and then just go red dot in here because it is from a comic book character already dot that's shane evans and i've created okay and then he suggested why don't you do a a circle a bullseye on the back and i thought why not and so we're going to do that as well all right so here's next up let's get up to um talking about the auction we had sales and stuff so these are some of the price um some of the um, items there so i was supposed to close it last night if it's still open uh thanks Edmonds. but we'll try to sort out what we're going to do with that and so these are the kind of products there uh, on there so you've got quill from mandalorian you've got a brand new um, x factors visionary uh Peter David graphic novels usually sells for 33 bucks all right that's the price on the back uh we had this as you can see it sells for 29 dollars all right brand new and still in case never open uh wolverine fig pin i love these when i was a kid i was oh man that's a cool thing so i buy these because i enjoyed them when i was a kid so you got i've i had two of these that's the only reason i'm selling this this is unopened look it's still got the little plastic tag on there unopened and I don't think I open it, so it's probably still got the top one as well. So mint and box, like they say. All right, so I only selling this because it was two. I had two copies of it. Stuff like that, right? So it's not because um, you know I'm trying to get rid of stuff. It's because uh, I'm trying to raise money for what we're doing with the boosted auction um, campaign. I have a copy of this, so I'm you know I'm selling that. So stuff like that. And so you've got, gosh, what is this? This is yeah. This was um, the eyes that light up um actually I'll show it to you belt buckle transformers belt buckle it's a collector's piece right you're not going to see some of these anymore and so you know it's, for me it's really hard to let go of those things but there, it's a, there's a reason for why i'm doing this and selling these because they can still go go back on my shelf right um if they don't sell but i rather you know we raise some money for the company that we're building that we can you know we've got a vision for the future and especially me i've got a vision for the future on how we do this and where we take what we're doing and uh you know try to make something of um lasting for new zealanders in the future and uh, make it available you know making comic comic uh, making comics from new zealand uh go worldwide but actually helping people get started up in it if that's what they want to do if they want to if they want to get into comics and we want to make that available opportunity available in the future you know it's a bit slow process i think um if i remember right old um rico already bought, got um, put his name on this so he's got that um also on um you know there's doctor um doctor strange uh keychain that's up and I know this has already been sold. It's been, whoops, this has already been claimed. So thank you. Uh, I can't remember the name that's been claimed. So, and then also there's these art books, right? If you're, if you, if you want to learn how to do figures and stuff, but please understand these are mature books, right? These are um, art, art books from artists who have like, who have career artists who basically go, dear Mr. Uh, you know, DC, Dark Horse, Marvel, editor uh this is me my work as an artist do you you know here it's free hold on to it in case you know if you've got any work available i'd be keen uh if it's you know if you think i'm you know if my work is uh you know good enough for that and so yeah that's what that's for also you know there's the fantastic four secret invasion um graphic novel right so there isn't that many things but there was there's a reason for that because I'm, i don't really like to let go of, of what i own and it's really hard for me to do you know but there's some also because you know if you're a collector and it's in your tree you know you don't you know you want to hold on to stuff 
So I'm only letting go of this because I have two copies of it. I've, you know, I have two of these. And this is a, this is a ex convention exclusive. And Saga. And I hear Saga's back. Or, if I, or am I wrong? Or is that Fables? But yeah, I think Saga's back. So the comic book series Saga's back. Um, you know. And another one was Linda Calarizian Pop. Funko Pop. And of course, because I already have some, I think about two two different other versions of that. Okay, and then there was also this. A green venom. <laughs> I don't know how old this is, but this is old. So, you know, I'm not a I'm not a huge venom fan. Um, so it's not it's not a biggie for me to let go of that. But hey, if it you know, I think this might be a Todd Todd McFarlane one. I can't tell. My eyes are so bad these days. Uh, I usually get Jason when we're out to look at these. Um, and he usually ends up carrying all this stuff anyway. So he gets to, yeah, he looks, you know, he's got good eyesight. So he looks and goes, hey, this is what that is. All right. So there we go. So those are those items that are up. Oh, there was also this, which was claimed. So that's cool. Thank you again. Uh, I think it was claimed by the same person that claimed the... Uh, um, or is this the stormtroopers pin? Um, not pin. Sorry, uh, stormtroopers keychain, metal keychain. All right, we're almost there. Let's get to the comics. So this is last week's um, purchase from. Excuse me. Purchase from JJ. All right, let's have a look. As you can see, I like I like opening these because I don't once I've bid on them or whatever bought them, I've never I don't see what there are. So it's always a really cool thing to see what I've purchased. Um, and so it's like unboxing, right? I'm unboxing these. It's a surprise to me as much as it's to you guys because it's just such a cool um, way to you know see what's in there because. I've forgotten because of so many ones I'm buying. All right. Even though I shouldn't be buying so many because, you know, it's, it's very costly. But, you know, it is what it is. If you're a fan and you want the books, you know, you go for it. All right. Once again, very well packed. All right. This is inside the old $8 bag. Bubble wrapped. And, of course, card boxed on both sides. Perfect. And on top of that, in a manila or brown paper bag as well. So hopefully it's bagged and boarded. And the cool thing is that most of the most of the comic collectors nowadays always have their, um, you know, mostly 90% of the time have their comics and bag and boards because we are, you know, we're wise to the fact that, you know, we need to protect what what's being sold. And also me, I'm always saying, hey, please have it in bag and bone. Or if not have it in the bag and have it in a cardboard you know in cardboard backing when you send it across because posties you know or even delivery guys it gets chucked around the and the truck then a rush you know something else drops on it and next thing you know you got a damaged book all right so here's a note uh, thanks for buying. I've added a second issue of New Mutants and issue of New 52 for you as a freebie. Jonathan, cheers brother. Let's do this. I've almost got this. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Like I said, again, sell a pack even with a bag. So, let's have a look. It's been a long way to get to this, so... This is the one, Weird Wonder Tales, number 18. One of the old ones, um, I don't remember why I got this one, but um, I just thought it was pretty cool. I thought it's such an old book, and I like the old comics. I think, um, you know, they just, yeah, they just kind of like, um, it's the nostalgia factor, it's seeing art of the, the way kids, of people used to draw in the past. I mean, you look at that. Right, you look at the amazing detail at the back of that. Right, 
and um and so you look at that and then you look at the modern artwork very cartoony very simplified and i don't mind that all right i don't mind that at all but it just shows you that it's the difference um uh different stages of um of the comic book industry right and so you end up seeing the that's what i mean the great thing is having so much older comics to look at as like references as just pieces of artwork and stuff um so right so f number 40 new mutants and i think this is a newsstand nope there's a direct edition and this is a direct edition as well it's from dan abnett and remember like i think last video i was talking about andy lanning and dan abnett so you can see dan abnett writing this here in um it was it may 4 uh, in 2012 when he was writing um gosh i can't remember what comic i pulled up the other day oh yeah was it this one no i think it was um i think it was valiant wasn't it talking about valiant let's let's just hope it's this one yeah so like i said here's dan abnett right writing valiant uh back in was it 94 95 back in 95 94 because it takes a few <laughs> a bit of time to write these out right so 94 94 right uh before it actually, what i mean before it goes to productions it takes you around about six seven maybe almost a year a uh, month to a year before a actual book is produced because the artist the editor coloring uh inking and so on and so yeah so you got dan abnett and then dan abnett here writing um new mittens all the way from valiant to this now like this is what 212 that's that's 20 years later just just 18 years later between the two of them so you can see this you know as a as a career writer right and the sad thing is like DC and Marvel are getting rid of the career writers because maybe they cost too much or maybe because, you know, they want to have new blood in that they can nurture into their image going for the next 20 years or so much, right? But, but the great thing is that these creators are still around creating stuff. I know that, like I mentioned last week, I think Dan's moved on to AWA or doing self, self um, his own create our own stuff so yeah okay so and then also like uh, Jonathan said you know he gave me a, a second copy of um, New Moons and here's Stormwatch um, Peter Milligan I like Peter Milligan he was the last writer on the 300 issue of of Hellblazer which I liked I liked the I like where Hellblazer was going but I guess the numbers wasn't adding up for DC and so they thought, oh, you know what? We'll just bring him into the, you know, into the new DC. And so they did. But this is like, um, yeah, this is such a cool cover. I, um, who is this cover by? And also, like, I just love comic art. I, I, I love Western art. And I love, um, you know, the details and stuff with different quality of artists and stuff so let's have a look oh look at that figures right i want to be able to have my characters be done up like that i'm actually looked at getting a friend to do it but he wasn't able to do it due to um injuries that he sustained in his head and so he can't recall how to do it so i'm gonna i want to get some clay myself and have an attempt at it i don't think i'm going to be great at it but i'll be able to do what i can in a simple form and then later on we'll probably be able to add new toy designers to what we're doing or even people who are starting out and i think or sculptures i should say and i think this is why we do what we do at plunger right because we want to bring in more more and not bring it but give more opportunities to other creatives whatever field they're in like if you're if you're like basically doing teddy bear clothing you know you've got an opportunity to do that for us you know i think you know it's not like we're full of money and we can go here here but you know we can 
basically show off what it is and try to like when we have some money to pay for that and stuff and like last year i raised like i said i raised money to do um the uh, incredible um funko not funko sorry everybody thinks it's funko because it looks similar but it's a chibi and it's a chibi version of my character incredible and it's all oh, i'm designing more more of them and doing it in my own style so it looks as unique in the way that we have it it's way more detailed um there's more sort of um coloring so if you can hand, you can hand paint it once we have it made uh into that show shadows i even when we did the the um kids coloring thing i actually i think it was in the book yeah i think it was in the book i, I had it down as sorry in the in, in the incredible comic book i had each area numbered so you could like have light and dark shades but for the kids we like we just left it like that so oh yeah i forgot so the other thing that we had in the auctions was photos like signed photos and there was a four in a pack so if you want to check that out on the um on that auction you can see you could actually have signed photographs and there actually are photographs they're not like prints they're actually um you know photo photos of their work and then it's signed by the artist uh or the writer i think that was sean gordon one of them i'm not sure uh, I can't remember the names, but people would know who it is because of the artwork. Yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, like, I would love to see our characters have, like, looking like that, having figures made up looking like that. I've, um, I've actually redesigned the, uh, with my cosplayer. Uh, we had a dis um, discussion last week over coffee about how, how do we get Incredible Girl to look cool and, and a combination of the color she has. And it looks great on a cosplay so that's something you know i've kept in mind but i hadn't really think, thought about it so we've designed and i designed a whole new like the color schemes the same but it is a bit more of a bit more bit more of a unique touch to it uh even though the, the costumes are already unique i never didn't do anything to the head because i the because i love the look of um you know the way I designed the mask and everything it's perfect it was just I always had trouble with the with the shoulder pads uh not trouble but I was like was you know it wasn't my best thing look on there and I was like and the boots a bit more and now it's like looks really cool and crisp and I thought it was very cool okay so that's yeah so that's Dan Abnett oh sorry that's um Peter Mulligan like um you know wrote tons of um issues of Hellblazer and that's it for today oh yeah so somehow somewhere i ended up picking this a couple years ago and as soon as i saw it i was like this is uh you know judge dredd's um gun you know it's a uh it's a nerf kind of like a nerf gun ripoff type thing there is no so we know it's just a ripoff of it right but i'm not sure if it's the actual um you know judge dredd thing and i've tried many times trying to find out uh, but it doesn't matter to me. I just love the look of it. It's such a cool thing. And the other thing is, I gotta, I gotta create these really cool looking um, pulse pulse guns, pulse pistols for uh, Red Dot, because um, you know it's kind of like a part of the Plant Universe. Red Dot starts off carrying like these friggin', you know, actual real bullet um, guns and then ends up like um uh, running into something and ends up being given these pulse rifles or re-rigged re pulse pistols i should say I always keep saying rifles pistols and so he uses that part of him so he's a double you know doubled gun toting uh vigilante all right so hopefully you enjoyed this video and thanks for jonathan for uh, for the comics this week and this is yeah this is what i've added to my to my list this week apart from those other two and three so weird tales number 18 i wonder what year this is from i always like i i think i was told but i, I you know it was on the list but I always buy things really as old as i can get my hands on so number 18 fair i say i would say this is from 1976 so that's three years i was three years old when, I was, when this came out 76 yeah that's pretty cool look 
Krang. <laughs> another one, another old comic added to the list. It's hard case, it's like all these ants and stuff. Like this giant ant. Yeah. Run! Krang is destroying the city. But that but what's ahead of us is even worse. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. So wherever you're watching, um, thank you for checking checking this out and please subscribe, whatever, you know the deal. And um thank you for watching and wherever you are, be well, be safe, kakite anno.